it began with darkness. Pitch black. Formless and empty. Into this darkness, God created light. Created entire galaxies. Countless wonders beyond imagination. And to behold His glory, He breathed life into His children. He loved them with a passion burning brighter than the sun. And for a time, He made His dwelling with them in a beautiful, perfect world. But then, this love was torn apart. Fractured by a crushing abyss so wide that it could never be crossed. An immense chasm created by our sin, our pride, our disobedience. And so the darkness returned, and with it came death, wars, plagues, and exile. But our Father refused to leave His children in the darkness. So once again, He sent His light to dwell on earth, to become Emmanuel, God with us, to teach us, to heal us, and save us from the terrible wages of sin. But where he preached peace, he was met with hostility. Where he preached love, hatred burned against him. Where he preached forgiveness, his enemies cried out for execution. He was arrested, tortured, and sentenced to death as a criminal. With nails in his hands, Jesus bore the unfathomable weight of our sin and cleansed us from all unrighteousness. They assigned him a grave with the wicked and sealed his tomb with a stone. Darkness reigned over the land once more as hope seemed to vanish. But on the third day, His light pierced the shadows. His power shook the earth. The Son of God rose, declaring victory over death and throwing wide the gates of heaven. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. His love still calls to us. His grace still covers us. This is the Gospel. This is the good news of Christ. When peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll Whatever my life Thou hast taught me to say It is well, it is well with my soul It is well It is 
Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. We are very glad that you have joined us for worship this morning. Before we begin our service, I wanted to share some upcoming events in the life of our community. We have appreciated the responses from our mail-in ballots for the annual election of officers for our leadership board. Ballots needed to be postmarked by January 31st. Our board will be sharing the results of the elections following our monthly board meeting that needed to be rescheduled for February the 10th at 6 p.m. For those members of the board or those interested in joining to listen in, we will be meeting in person February the 10th at 6 p.m. here in the Narthex. We are asking participants to wear masks and maintain social distancing of six feet or more. As your moderator elect, I am excited about the future of our church and all the new possibilities that are before us. All are invited to share their weekly tithes and offerings. We appreciate your loving contributions to our First Christian Church Disciples of Christ family. You can make an online donation through the website, through PayPal, or by mailing your contribution here to the church at 2102 Avenue A in Scotts Bluff. As a reminder, we'll be celebrating communion together. So please go to your pantry and retrieve a piece of bread or cracker and a small cup of juice so that you may have those elements near you for our time of communion. For those of you who may not have known, Pastor Nona Hodder's husband, Skip Hodder, passed away on Monday, February the 1st. Due to Skip's passing, Nona is taking some time off to be with her family. So today's worship will be a little bit different with some guest speakers and volunteers. Before beginning our worship together, I would like to take a special moment to offer a prayer for Skip, his family, and for Nona. If you will please join me in prayer. 
Loving God, we, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for being the Lord God Almighty with no ending and no beginning. We thank you, Lord, for your continual presence, your continual guidance, and, and, and you being ever, ever with us and ever present. Father, we want to thank you for the life of Skip. We thank you for the, the blessing that he brought his family, um, our church, and the entire world. Pray, Lord, that you will guide Nona, um, the children, as well as all of Skip's family. We pray that you will bring them comfort, peace, and some understanding through this difficult time. We pray for our entire church family that they will have the ability to share love and support to Nona and to be able to share in Skip's memory. In your name, amen. Again, thank you for joining us this morning. No matter who you are or where you are from, no matter what you're going through, we love you. And we are, you are welcome here to worship with us. Let's sing this song right here. You know this one? This is my desire to walk. You got it. Walk with all who share you. And all that is within me, I give. That's my prayer. I don't know about yours. I just want to be completely His. It's my desire tonight. Sing it from the depths of your soul. This is my desire. Come on.
Today's reading comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also, for that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Here ends the reading. Hello, I'm Jeff Cavins, and today we're looking at the readings for the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time. We all like to hear good news. When we turn on the television, oftentimes we don't hear good news, but we're always seeking good news. When we get a call from one of our relatives, we hope that it's good news. At the heart of the gospel is good news, and Jesus came to proclaim the gospel, the good news, which is the UN Galleon. It's kind of interesting because the world has their version of good news and Jesus has his version of the good news. That's not something new. That's kind of the way it's, it's always been. It surprises people to realize that just before Jesus came on the scene about 2,000 years ago, there was a, a large portion of the world that was involved in Caesar worship. In Rome, uh, the Roman Republic, before Jesus came, was run by what was called a triumvirate, three major leaders. There were two sets of this triumvirate type of government. In the first was Julius Caesar, and he proclaimed himself to be God. Now, I, know, I think most of us know what happened. You remember the Ides of March, and Julius Caesar was brutally murdered in the Senate. Before he died, however, he adopted a young man by the name of Octavian, who became a part of the second triumvirate of the Roman Republic. One of the other men on that triumvirate was Mark Anthony. Well, eventually there came a war between the two of them, and Octavian wanted to literally be the sole leader of the Roman Republic. And so he challenged Mark Anthony to a battle at Actium, out to sea, and he defeated Mark Anthony, and Cleopatra, along with Mark Anthony, ended up committing suicide, leaving Octavian as the sole leader of the Roman Republic. Now, Octavian was adopted previously by Julius Caesar, and so he was known as the Son of God. And he went into Rome and he was given the senatorial name of Caesar Augustus, and that's probably a name that you are familiar with. Years later, there was a find in Corinth, an archaeological find that had an inscription on it speaking of Caesar Augustus. And it said that not before, not now or after will anyone eclipse the glory of Caesar Augustus, the son of God, the prince of peace, and the one who brings the UN Galleon, the good news, to the world. And so the whole world was listening to the good news of Caesar Augustus. And it's in that situation that the Prince of Peace, the Son of God, the one who ushered in the good news for the world was born in Bethlehem. Now we've always had the world's good news versus God's good news. And in the reading today in Mark's gospel, it talks about this, where in Mark chapter 1, verse 29, it says, And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever, and immediately they told him of her. And he came and took her by the hand, lifted her up, and the fever left, and she served him. Then the reading goes on and it says, And in the morning, a great while before day, he rose and went out to a lonely place, and there he prayed. And Simon and those who were with him followed him, and they found him and said to him, Everyone is searching for you. 
I think that that phrase is, is priceless because it's true. Everyone is searching for him. Everyone is looking for the good news. Everyone uh, desires to hear that good news. When you look uh, on television today, you'll see all kinds of people who are giving out their version of the good news. But the problem is, it's not a good news that brings you to heaven and it's not a good news that allows you to live the life that God intended for you to live. That good news comes from Jesus. Now, as we continue on in the church's liturgical year, you're going to run into people at work, at home, and in your neighborhood who are searching for Jesus. But the searching for Jesus isn't always real clean. Sometimes people get sloppy and sometimes people get angry and sometimes people do things that they nor wouldn't normally do, but it's all in a search for God and for happiness. We, like Paul, in second reading this week in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, we can preach the good news to them. Now, by preaching, I'm not saying preach down. I'm saying we can share the good news of Jesus Christ with the hurting world around us. We start off in the first reading with Job speaking about his helplessness. The second reading, Paul is talking about being a faithful preacher of the good news. And in Mark's gospel, Jesus came to proclaim this good news. Let's live that good news. Let's celebrate that good news and let's pass that good news on to others this week, those who are desperately searching for Jesus. Use it for your glory 
sing it together. Lord, I offer. And Lord, I offer my life to you. Everything I've been through, use it, Lord. Use it for your glory. And Lord, I offer my days to you. Lifting my praise to you as a pleasing sound.
During their time together, Jesus and his disciples did good work. They went around and they helped those who were ill. They fed the hungry. They gave drink to those who were thirsty. They spread the good news of God's expansive love for all. Doing that kind of hard work required them to also have meals to sustain them. So often they would gather together for a meal where they would reflect on the day's work, identify what they may have done wrong, and also think about what to do better next time. So it was natural that the last night Jesus shared a meal with his friends, they were at table together. The disciples didn't know it was anything special. It was much like all the other meals. But Jesus wanted to leave them with something that they could turn to to hold them together when times got difficult. So as they were eating, he took the bread, as was often the approach in a meal, gave thanks to the holy for the gift of the grain, and he broke it. And he passed it to his disciples saying, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. Later, 
He took the cup. And after giving thanks to the holy for the gift of the vine, he shared it also with his disciples saying, drink of this all of you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat the bread and drink the cup and remember what Jesus taught, his work continues with us even to today. Let us pray. Holy One, these simple gifts of bread and cup have so much meaning for so many people. Although their understandings of the bread and cup might differ, there is one common root to the table. So we ask that you bless the bread, the cup, and us as we partake of them, that we might be nourished and given the energy we need to continue your work of justice and compassion for all the world. Amen.